Welcome to the Jackson Cloud. I'm Jamin. I'm Casey. And I'm Olivia. And we are into the 24 elders. We are in Revelation 4. We started this two episodes ago. Revelation 4 is like the theophany of theophanies. Theophany being like when God appears in some kind of way. He's appeared with shiny gems, with a divine counsel, with a rainbow-like glory appearance, with rumblings and thunder and flashes of lightning with his heavenly host with the angels with the archangels above the firmament the sea of glass like crystal oh am i on a rhythm now you were, much, <laughs> you were starting to get there i was just like that that could be close well with all of those things recorded throughout the bible john takes all of them he's got the theophany of theophanies going on he's in the heaven of heavens He's in there in the spirit and he sees it all and mind blown. And this is a powerful passage. I mean, our minds are often blown when we just read it. I've heard some of the greatest, most convicting sermons ever preached on passages like this one. Uh, some of the most powerful songs we know of have come from this. I mean, this is literally where holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, comes from, things like that which we've quoted in who knows how many different songs, uh, songs that have stuck around forever and we really held on to. So with all that being said, we're in the Theophany of Theophanies, and here is God sitting on his throne, and around him are 24 elders. So he's in the middle. That's how it sounds to me. When, when I was, I think before I ever paid attention to them being around him, I always thought of like round table God at the front and then a circle around him. But that that's not that wouldn't be around you. That would be Well that would be a round. Yeah. <laughs> so I quickly Googled pictures and all throughout history of all the pictures we have of artists trying to describe this. They all go for the circle around God. And I think that's important. I mean, what does that communicate to us? That the Senate in Star Wars is based <laughs> off of Revelations. <laughs> The Divine Council is not in Star Wars, Olivia. <laughs> uh, it means that he's lifted up. He's, you know... Well, he's the focus. He's mm. the center of it all, right? I mean, they are honed in on him. They're focused on him. He's in charge. I'm so happy that you just told my joke, but still used it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so here's uh, the 24, 24 elders. Uh, they have their own... Thrones. They're seated on their own thrones. They've got crowns on their head. So they've been established some kind of authority. Yet we're going to see in a minute that they all just take off their crowns and cast it before the throne saying, Worthy are you to receive glory and honor and power. So uh, these, these beings are, are worshiping God. They're all focused on him. But why 24? I mean, we're used to a lot of different numbers throughout the Bible that represent all different kinds of things. 24 does come up in a few spots, but... Does it? It does. I'll get to that if you don't know what those spots are, but... Because Jack Bauer can save the world. Uh, don't even understand this joke. What? TV show 24? Yeah, I got that. I don't understand the joke. <laughs> I don't know the TV show. Just just the fact that... How is 24 significant? Oh, <laughs> that's the name of the show. Okay. <laughs> Olivia, do you have any ideas? <laughs> I Wait, you didn't know that was the name of the show? Sure, where else 24, 24 shows comes up? up. Well, okay. You know, we've got three, we've got seven mm. all the time. We get 12 a few times, but like 24 doesn't really bring anything to head. Well, we do have, uh, I think it was David. Um, David divided the, the leaders of priests into 24 divisions. Okay. whose purpose were to minister in the temple. So, I think we've kind of talked about this in the past. There are some, uh, there, are, there are these moments where we wonder if, like, um, earthly... Let me, let me try this again. Heaven has always existed. Yes. <laughs> or God has, God has always existed, right? And he's always... He's always existed... He makes the heavens and the earth. And the earth is like, when we have these sacred spots on the earth, they're shadows, they're representations of what it's like in heaven, right? 
Okay. So Eden is supposed to be like a shadow of what's in heaven. All the different temples that were made for God, so the tabernacle, Solomon's temple, those are supposed to be shadows of, of what is in heaven. So you would think in that case that like priests are probably doing things that maybe some similar to what like angels are doing in heaven, like they're mirroring each other or something. So uh, that's why when I think of David making some priests, about 3,800 or 38, yeah, 3,800 priests, I think, he makes them, assigns them to always singing in the tabernacle. My thought would be like, David expects that there's always music glorifying God in the tabernacle, in the heaven of heaven. So these priests are also echoing that on the earth, things like that. So um, one thing that we might say then is if there's 24 uh, divisions of priests serving in the tabernacle, could they be shadows or mirrors, if you will, of the 24 elders of heaven? Could be. Since that's a direct number, I think that's one possibility. It's one. And this and people fight, scholars fight all the time over what the 24 elders are. So on one side of things, this is one proposal. Since 24 is used in the Old Testament of priests, and we've already seen priests and priest themes show up throughout the last three chapters of Revelation. Jesus is the high priest. He's made us a kingdom of priests. Well, we're already thinking with priestly language. And because we're now in the heaven of heavens and the real tabernacle, the real holy space that we're just echoing when we try to make sacred space on the earth, well, then makes sense that um, we might see that echo again with the 24. Okay. One possibility. Can you think of any others? There's one for each hour of the day. 24 hours yeah let's come back to that in a minute what are some of the other um, other possibilities you might think of 24 doesn't show up a lot but if we divide it we can get into numbers we're familiar with like three that's three. a pretty common one yeah but that leaves eight though and eight's not that common you'd think seven with John's propensity <laughs> with John's love of that number uh, but 12, 12 divides very nicely. Let's even think. Yeah, but that still leaves two, though. And you'd rather have three. Three is better than two. What do you mean it leaves two? Because in order 24 to divide divided by 12, by 12, you get two. Sure, but let's say the symbology of 12 is what? 12 disciples. 12 disciples, also... The 12 tribes of Israel. 12 tribes of Israel. So... Uh, Let's say that there's this possibility then that um, the symbology of that, if we were to go that route, would be that these elders represent like God's saving hand upon the 12 tribes of Israel, which then is extended to the entire world through the work of the 12 disciples who then reach all the Gentiles, things like that. So then you'd have within the number 24, the symbology of reaching all of humanity there that all of humanity is bowing down before God's throne you have that possibility some other ways we could go about it I mean what exactly are these beings <laughs> I mean humanity is going to be offered a place to, to sit with Jesus on his throne are these humans <laughs> I have no idea on that one I mean I don't have a Doctor Who reference for that. <laughs> I don't have. Yeah. Well, this is one possibility that people throw out. Are these 24 elders, are these uh, human beings that have now been glorified in a sense and God has extended to them uh, some more authority and they're sitting on their thrones and uh, uh, they're human believers representing all believers? Or... Are they spiritual beings? That makes sense too, right? <laughs> but are there 24 spiritual beings? Oh, well, there's lots of spiritual beings. There's so just not very many is, that are named yeah, in the Bible. Yeah, there's only like two named in the Bible. But we know that there's a lot more. Yeah. 
So these right, but be... then does that mean they're these are like the captains of the spiritual being sections? I don't know. I, I mean, feel maybe like, like archangels. Yeah. Do we have a number of how many archangels there are? Archangels vary throughout uh, Jewish literature. In our Bible, we see like archangels mentioned, but we only have the name of like two angels. Michael, right, but that doesn't Gabriel. mean that there's not more of them. Right. Um, in Jewish literature, there was sometimes seven, sometimes five. It it just it changed okay. with like every book. So uh, for me, I aim for seven because I feel like John talks about the seven spirits before God's throne. And I think he's probably talking about archangels or the seven angels of seven churches. I don't know. Um, But either way, um, 24 archangels would be a lot, I think, for Jewish literature. They wouldn't think of that. Uh, If we were to think of um, beings with power over nations, that wouldn't quite fit here, right? The little g-gods of Deuteronomy 32. That doesn't fit here very well because, A, they're worshiping God freely. And the false g-gods, according to Psalm 82, like they are turned against God. Um, false little G gods have turned against God. It also wouldn't make sense because they, um, in biblical thinking, there are 70 nations. So that would make you think of 70 little G gods, not 24 of them. Right. If it said 70, then we'd be like, ah, I know what's going on here, I think. But 24 still doesn't quite match. Is that how many were left? Maybe after the the people warred against each other and like 24 were the ones that were the good ones that stayed faithful? Uh, no, because um, none of them stayed faithful. Uh, well, <laughs> Psalm okay. 82 says basically all of you. Uh, Daniel 10 says only Michael, your chief prince, only Michael something something. So only Michael is one that you can like trust type thing. Well, it was a stretch. I tried. <laughs> no, I know. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to think, like, what are these 24? I would say, like, well, okay, if we were to go the divine being type route, I would say, like, these are just, like, another layer of divine beings within a hierarchy that the Bible is never super clear on every last dimension of it. So why not 24 divine beings surrounding God's throne? Sure. So the, they're the 24 middle managers for the 70s. Uh, well, okay, so okay, let's scratch the seventy, Casey. No more of the seventy. That's that's been thrown out. <laughs> well, here's what we do know: they have thrones and crowns. So what? They have some kind of authority that's been delegated to them. Mm-hmm. There's some kind of upper level something. Are they glorified humans? We don't know. Are they spiritual beings? We don't know. I would tend to go the spiritual being route because we're in spiritual being territory. Right. <laughs> so that would just, if, if John said, I was in heaven and I saw 24 spirit, you know, 24 thrones and beings, I would immediately think that. But it's not impossible to think humans. Well, here's the, the other question I do have. Mm. Is there potentially more thrones there now than there were when he saw it? Well, in the sense that Jesus delegates his authority and throne also to his believers. Sure, but is that like actual different thrones or is that just him extending like sit on my throne with me type thing? It was just me throwing out a guess. I have no idea. Like it was just what if the possibility exists? Well, there's one more possibility that I think is really, really good. Um, but before we do that, let's cover the possibilities we've already covered because those were the popular ones. Okay. Okay. Number one is 24 priestly divisions of, of the priests on earth. So maybe this is a, maybe what those priests were mirroring is 24 divisions in heaven. Maybe. That one seems too boring. I don't think so. No, because when I'm leading worship at church, I like to remember, like, David set up a bunch of worship leaders to constantly be filling God's room with praise and that I'm, in a sense, stepping into... To help with that. ...an ancient history and shadowing something that's happening in heaven. Okay. Doesn't feel boring to me. All right, fine. (laughs) That sounds much cooler. (laughs) Okay, so, number one, 
could be a mirroring of, of the heavenly tabernacle, right? Number two, it could be glorified humans that have been extended authority. Could be. It's nothing really against that. Um, it could be representative of the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 disciples uh, branching out to reach all the Gentiles. So like the full crux of saved humanity could be representing that 12 and 12. Um, or it could just be some divine beings that are granted some authority that we don't really have specified and don't really necessarily need to have specified. Or, or this is one that uh, Casey mentioned when he got super obscure here for a minute. Michael Heiser works off, uh, I think his name's Molina, works off Molina's work to kind of bring about a certain idea that I think makes a lot of sense. Um, one of God's titles throughout this is the Tetragrammaton, right? And he is, I... Uh, you went crazy on an episode with that, yeah. <laughs> Tetragrammaton. He's a God who who is, who was, and is to come, mm-hmm. right? That's like the fullness of time right there. Okay. Okay. Now, by the time of John's writing, the subdivisions of time and whatnot had been worked into 24. Now, if you have 24 spiritual beings in heaven, what would they look like from John's perspective? How has he already described spiritual beings to look? Uh, Bright. Stars. Shiny, yeah. Stars, right? Bright, shiny. The seven angels are seven stars. Jesus holds the stars in his hands. Uh, even, even they're called uh, flames of fire, which is more like stars as we think of them, right? So here's Jesus with stars, and we think of stars from Jesus' perspective as being angels symbolically, but also from ancient times they thought stars were angels uh, or spiritual beings of the heavens. So here's God, the Tetragrammaton, who was and is and is to come. The fullness of time is in him. He's the Alpha and Omega. And he's surrounded by 24, if we were to go the route of divine beings all around him, or if we were to go the full symbolic route or the way that ancients thought, 24 stars all around him, pointing at him. Uh, we could essentially think of this in terms of, of time, that all of time is bowing down before God, that something representative of every hour, representative of every nook of, of space and time, you know, is, is all here worshiping God. I think that works out to a certain extent because... If they thought of heavenly beings as stars, what did they also think of heavenly beings as? They thought of them as time counters. They were clocks, right? I mean, we don't think of it that way today. I just look up at space like, hey, it always looks like that. But it doesn't. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> if you're an ancient person and you looked at it every night and you didn't have light getting in the way and you had to figure out north, south, east, west based on that and what month it was and all that, that would always become like time is up there. I know what month it is. I know what day it is. I know what part of the month it is based on the moon, the sun, the well, stars, the constellations. Did he also kind of set it up like a sundial? Yeah. So if God's in the middle with his throne and the rest are on the outside, you know, when the sun shines, the shadow points to where it's supposed to be for a sundial. Hmm. So that could also represent time. Hmm. It's based on him setting it up like a sundial too. Yeah. So that does fit your theory. But that's just a Jamin. No, it's not me, actually. It's Heiser working off Molina there. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's just a Heisner Molina theory. Menin theory. Uh, but yeah, um, let's see. Molina says on the analogy of the year, the day was divided into 12 larger double hours. Nah, you know, if I read this, we're all going to get lost. It gets complicated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Where else? Oh, this is interesting. John eleven nine. 9. Since John, you know, I would say it's the same John writing Revelation as John wrote his gospel. Uh, John eleven nine. 9. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? 
If anyone walks in a day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. If anyone walks in a night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. So Jesus is operating off the, you know, time divided into 12 chunks. 12 chunks. And John is thinking in time of 12 in his gospel. Mm -hmm. Why not be thinking of time, fullness of time in 24 when he's talking about, about that? Now, we'll see in our next episode another possibility of Jesus. Um, well, in our next episode, we're going to talk about the four living creatures around God's throne because we're not done with all these weird beings. And the four living creatures, I think also, and this is especially based off of Heiser's work, um, the four living creatures also have a good possibility of, of belonging in stars space constellations things like that mm -hmm. again to kind of refer to fullness of time so time is one of the themes that's going to keep coming up throughout revelation time is in god's hands and this is a story of the end of this age and the start of the next one so what do we do with the 24 elders honestly you could go any of these routes and for that reason i half feel like the best route to go is None of them? All of them. <laughs> oh, all of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing that's that's not really not true. Humans will be glorified and given authority, so could they be that? Sure. There's heavenly beings in heaven worshiping God. Could it be that? Sure. Does the fullness of time worship God? Sure. Is it, or is what we do in, in our sacred spaces echoes of heaven? Sure. Like, it is just which one is right, which one is most right, I guess would be the best question to ask. What did John have in mind? But none of them are like untrue. And God would be the kind of author to give us a quadruple entendre <laughs> just by just by giving us a glimpse into the heavenlies, you know? Sounds about right. No. Yeah. So with that being said, what is your favorite of the interpretations? Let us know in the comments below. Or on the Discord. And be sure to like and comment. And try to beat me to that first comment. We'll see you there.